good morning. I know that I'm the um, final obstacle between uh, all of you and, and lunch, so I'll try to be as brief as, as possible. Although I think we are within time, so it's, it's all good. Um, I'm here to, to talk to you about, about AgriPV and, and, and thank you very much to, to Solitech for inviting me to speak about this at a really, really timely moment because it was just when we as a company were starting to be interested in this uh, segment of the PV industry, which um, fits very well with my previous responsibilities as coordinator of the AgriSolar Workstream in Solar Power Europe. So today I'm going to be basically be talking to you about what I used to do before and what I'm doing now in, uh, in PV case. So basically the plan uh, for me today is first to give you a quick overview of what PV case is for those of you who, who don't know and then uh, give you a state uh, of play of agrivoltaics in the European Union uh, today. There are a lot of interesting things happening. And then move on to tell you about the, the work that, uh, that I coordinated uh, back in, in Solar Power Europe and, and with our best practice guidelines before explaining what, how uh, PV case and, and our offering uh, fits into, into all, of, uh, all of this. So PV case, uh, I think it's, it's uh, particularly interesting to, to be here today uh, in Lithuania and, and, and to experience firsthand uh, an example of um, leadership in the solar sector from a Lithuanian company. So PV case is, is uh, also from Lithuania, uh, headquartered in, in Kaunas, although we also now have offices in, uh, in Vilnius. Um, and we are w basically software developers working towards being uh, an end-to-end -end platform for the lifetime of uh, solar projects. Um, and basically we um, apply technology agile methods of software development to accelerate the development of uh, solar projects. Uh, with the overall objective to accelerate our f the fight against uh, climate change. And really uh, what we do is we focus very much on, on uh, automation and increasing the, the ease of uh, the design process of uh, solar PV uh, uh, projects without sacrificing anything in the ac accuracy. So we really give uh, and empower the engineers who are developing and designing projects to take uh, and make all the decisions they need to take uh, as easily as, and as accurately as, as possible. Our two, uh, two of our products are AutoCAD-based, uh, so, so they, they um, work within that uh, environment. And our one of our new products, PVK Sealed, is, is a web-based tool that I will explain a little bit uh, later. And, I mean, I think I, I've just started working for PVK uh, less than six uh, months ago. Um, but the company, uh, which is only four years old, had a phenomenal growth, really tracking the, the huge uh, increase and in acceleration in the, in the solar sector. And already we, we have uh, clients in, in, in 60 countries and, and, and uh, employees in, in eight uh, countries, um, which is great to be part of. So agrivoltaics in the EU, I mean, I think just before going into it, I was just reflecting about this uh, last yesterday evening, how much the, it has changed in the past two, two years. I mean, when I was first asked to, to work on, on this two and a half years ago, um, there was very little, at least in the mainstream, about uh, agrivoltaics. There was a lot of, uh, of academic literature uh, on it, but really, you know, no one knew about agrivoltaics outside maybe some, some expert circles, even within the solar, solar industry. Last night, I was watching a, a YouTube video uh, done by the Deutsche Welle uh, with a lot of uh, electronic music and uh, really uh, cool editing, uh, basically giving uh, a lot of really up-to-date and accurate information on, on agrivoltaics today. And I think, you know, it's really a testament to, to, to all the work that has been done that we are now there. Before going into agrivoltaics proper, I mean, I think uh, 
the key imperative and the reason why we're talking about this today is because we have a huge challenge in front of us. I mean, if we want to meet uh, our 2030 targets, we have to install uh, at least 710 gigawatts uh, by 2030. Um, this year, as far as I knew, before going on holiday uh, a month and a half ago, we were on track to install 40 gigawatts in, in Europe. Radvan, you're saying 60. Uh, Go, oh, go, I thought you were, that was, um, okay, okay. So this year, then that's reassuring. <laughs> um, I thought I was very out of tune. Um, this year we're on track to install uh, 40 gigawatts, which is already a huge increase from, from what we installed, the 26 gigawatts that we installed uh, last uh, year. Um, but it's not going to be enough, and, and, and indeed, I think we have to aim much uh, higher. And this opens a really important question, which Radovan already asked, is where these, uh, all this capacity is going to be uh, located. Luckily, we, we have a lot of available land uh, in, the, in the EU, uh, and uh, the solar technology is actually uh, quite uh, efficient in the way that it, it uses land, and particularly if you start thinking about dual Uses. And I think this is, this is quite important for it to be known, is that right now, today, about 40% of the land in the EU is used for agricultural uh, purposes. M the majority of that is, is uh, arable land, so 56% so of, of the total agricultural land uh, is used for um, other things that are not forest, mainly. And then if we only use 1% of that arable land, we would already far exceed what we need to install by, uh, by 2030. Really, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's not really a, a, a land use conflict problem per se. It's just about how we prioritize and how we uh, ensure that uh, there are no uh, problems about how we prioritize these land. Uh, uses and really I mean I think it's it's very interesting to see also how a growing number of EU uh, member uh, states are uh, beginning to actively support agrivoltaics within their uh, regulatory uh, frameworks back when I started working on on this uh, the, the only green country would have been France and as you can see uh, I have had to color some countries in a darker green than, uh, than France. Mainly uh, one of the key uh, markets or, or, or countries in this regard is, is Italy, which uh, is channeling um, more than 1.1 billion, 1 .1 billion euros to support the development of, of agrivoltaic uh, projects. I, I, I just learned uh, uh, this morning that we uh, are going to see the first tenders uh, coming out uh, to start channeling the, this, uh, this money, which will be based, and for me this is one of the most interesting parts, on a specific regulatory framework which includes a definition and really lays out the conditions uh, to call something an agreeable take project and also giving um, different tiers of support for different types of agreeable take projects. This is a huge huge advance because before that any agrivoltaic project that was built in the European Union was more often than not a little bit in a gray zone to say the least and this is came with a lot of uh, uncertainty obviously for for the developers and unfortunately also with um, a lot of bad practices to put it some way I think we, we have also very good of um, frameworks being put forward in, in Austria, which has um, a supportive uh, uh, additional investment subsidies for agrivoltaic projects. Germany also, which uh, held its first uh, agri-PV solar tender, it was very uh, undersubscribed, I think, because it was not well designed, unfortunately but which uh, has developed the first um, technical norm uh, for voltaic projects, which is extremely useful as a first step in trying to um, call uh, a 
cat a cat, as we say in, in, in Belgium, trying to understand what makes actual, actually an agrivoltaic uh, project, and which is due to be uh, updated and extended um, in, the coming, in the coming years, uh, extended and uh, updated into an actual full standard rather than a technical norm. Probably the, the, the last market I will, I will talk about is France, which is uh, by far the largest agrivoltaic market in, in, in Europe today, mainly because they've had since 2017 uh, support, uh, targeted support for agrivoltaic projects in the form of uh, innovation tenders, where a lot of the uh, innovative projects that were being supported were of an agrivoltaic nature. However, the problem in France is that the regulation is inherently unclear because it's not based on an actual law or set of laws, but rather on jurisprudence. So basically the whole uh, set of products were being uh, built on uh, two paragraphs uh, of uh, two court cases that lay uh, a very short definition of what made an agrivoltaic project. What this meant was that there was a lot of, um, again, bad practices, which uh, created pushback from the agricultural sector, um, which is the most important sector to consider when developing an agrivoltaic uh, project. I mean, if everything, and we'll go into this later, everything has to start from the, the farmer and the agricultural concept of the project. Another notable mention is, is Spain. I mean, Spain is really far behind um, all the other countries listed here, um, but they're already thinking about it. Uh, uh, there's a possibility to get uh, some uh, subsidies for uh, projects there, and uh, they are they've been working for some time on on a definition for agrivoltaic projects, which is again a really important uh, thing. And I mean. I think the reality and the, the reason why it's taken so long at these regulatory frameworks is that regulating agrivoltaics is very hard. I mean, it's already not easy for solar on its own. If you bring in the agricultural side, it becomes even more complex. And um, it's, it's really not straightforward because you have to bridge different sides from the end mainly the agriculture and the energy policies, but then also you need to think about the environmental impacts of this dual activity and the socio-economic context in which these projects are going to be uh, developed and whether or not they're going to be, for example, integrated within the rural communities where they're built. One thing that we did uh, at Solar Power Europe when we started thinking about this is uh, obviously as a lobbying focus organization, we started thinking, okay, what would be the most important things to tackle from a regulatory perspective? And we came with, uh, uh, to the conclusion of these five main points. Uh, the first is the need to develop coherent agri-voltaic uh, policy uh, frameworks and legal frameworks, which should include things such as definitions or um, ex uh, limits to the amount of uh, ground cover ratio that uh, would be um, needed to consider something agrivoltaic or, or not. And very much tied to that, the need, because it's not um, always, not, not still not uh, competitive, particularly with ground mount uh, solar projects, the need to introduce specific support frameworks. Uh, and I think here, here uh, uh, notably uh, Italy, France, and, and, and Germany, and, and, and Austria is what the main thing that they're doing right, is that they are providing this investment support for uh, project uh, developers uh, to bridge the gap until the, the cost for the, these projects and the additional costs, which are not only which are mainly material, uh, can, be, can be met to, to sell the electricity at a competitive uh, price. Then, but then we also have to think forward. And I think something that's really important and which was a problem in, in France and why the reason why, why there were so many bad practices is that there wasn't really a consistent quality assurance framework that would frame all of these projects and that would ensure that not only that the project was uh, generating electricity correctly, 
but that it was also functioning as an agricultural project, correctly, right? that it was actually producing an agricultural output uh, that was safe for the, for the uh, agricultural workers working on site. As always, uh, in, in, in solar, uh, and here more so, uh, permitting is a, is a huge uh, issue uh, because there is no regulatory framework, because there's no definitions. Many permitting authorities just look at uh, developers and raise their hand and say, what are you talking about? I mean, do you want to put like, agriculture here, but this is not a, uh, this is industrial land if you want to build a, a PV project. Really, I mean, the lack of clarity slowed things down for years. Uh, and I think this is one of the most important things to, to that is starting to, to change now as people start knowing about agrivoltaics and civil servants who, who are part of this uh, uh, citizenship start to know about it. And then finally, I mean, I think because it's a, an inherently innovative uh, segment of the PV uh, industry, there needs to be a lot of public and private R&D uh, funding channeled into agrivoltaic projects and to, to, to the agrivoltaic sector, not only to um, reduce costs, but particularly to better understand which types of crop and uh, PV system design combination work best, uh, which is something that is extremely site uh, and geographically uh, specific. I think uh, still at EU level, I mean, it was really, really interesting to see that uh, within the EU solar strategy, which uh, I think, as we all know, had, had a lot of very interesting things for for uh, the solar sector uh, in general, including uh, good uh, overall targets for agrivoltaics. Um, uh, sorry, solar in general. This commission included two key points uh, for me, which uh, look minor, but are uh, very big. The first is that the European Commission will uh, has committed to publish guidance for member states to, to promote the development of innovative forms of solar, which include agrivoltaics. I think this is going to go a long way to open the minds uh, of civil servants and politicians across the European Union, so that next time we speak, there are more dark green countries uh, on that map. And particularly that they are starting to think about this from the agricultural policy side. And I think that's extremely interesting because as I said before, the agriculture has to come first if we are going to be successful in this endeavor of agrivoltaics. And what they propose is that member states uh, consider promoting agrivoltaics through their national strategic plans for the common agricultural policy. Now, that's uh, what that means is, to put it in more familiar terms, the uh, agricultural uh, NECPs. So the long-term plans that member states have to put in place in, in order to explain how they're going to use the common agricultural policy funds. And already a couple of member states have uh, included policies and measures to promote agrivoltaics. These, and, uh, national, these national strategic plans are currently being uh, reviewed and should be finalized by the end of the year. Hopefully more uh, member states will take action in that direction. So in all that context, and actually as all of these developments were, were happening, within Solar Power Europe, we were trying to do a few things. First, we were trying to bring together as many uh, players uh, of the European agrivoltaic uh, space, from uh, developers to EPCs, uh, module manufacturers, uh, uh, research uh, institutes, and then trying to make sense of it all. I think there, is a, a, there was a lot of open questions back then. There still are a lot today. Uh, and, but we were trying to bring everyone together and find a common European approach that could uh, ensure that there was no divergence, notably in the, uh, at the time, hoped for regulatory frameworks, that we didn't end up in a situation like BIPV, where you have widely different uh, standards and technical norms governing uh, construction products across the European Union, which really uh, fragments the market and makes it 
very difficult for 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 uh, European players to to scale up. And one of the things that we did uh, was publish the first AgriSolar best uh, practice uh, guidelines. We developed this uh, collaboratively. I think there were uh, seven lead authors and about like 20 uh, people in total working uh, and editing uh, and reviewing this uh, document. And we did four main things. First, we provided a quick overview of the common barriers for agrivoltaics that existed and proposed you know, ways forward and uh, how to overcome them. We introduced a framework that we call the sustainable agriculture concept, and I'll go into that uh, later on, but whose main objective was to ensure that, as I said before, all agrivoltaic projects in the EU started from the agricultural uh, element uh, and side of uh, the project. We then define 19 best practices, both on the EPC and the o and of, uh, of agrivoltaic uh, uh, projects, looking at uh, them from an agronomical, an economical, and uh, an ecological uh, perspective. Uh, to ensure that the, the, the impacts were either minimized or any potential benefits were maximized. And then we featured 16 case studies to illustrate all of these uh, best uh, practices, which include everything from open to closed agrivoltaic systems, rooftop PV on agricultural buildings, and innovative uh, agri-PV uh, approaches. This, we were also very conscious that this was a, a first uh, step and that there was probably more that we didn't know that we did know. However, I think the, the fact that we put up, managed to publish this is testament that there was already a lot of things that were worth telling and that were uh, worth uh, pointing out. But probably in, in, the, in the next uh, year or years, hopefully, we will be uh, updating these, this document with the latest information because, again, as, uh, as it has gone into the mainstream, we have um, also been learning a lot and there have been a lot of new projects coming up online in, uh, in Europe. One of the main problems with agrivoltaics takes or, or, or challenges, uh, as I said before, is that it's a very complex uh, segment and I think I love this this uh, graph from from the Fraunhofer ESA because it really shows how quickly you get into uh, into details and, and the complexities in, in, in the way that you have to approach different uh, projects because first you start from the top the system can be either open or, or closed uh, that's uh, kind of uh, straightforward but then you you realize that you can use different structures if you were um, building an open agrivoltaic uh, project. You can get interspace PV, uh, where the modules are sort of like a, at a normal uh, height, or overhead, where your modules are elevated at like two, three meters or more. Same in, in, in closed systems, you very quickly have to divide it between the different types of buildings that are used in agriculture, mainly greenhouses and, and, and opaque uh, buildings. And then you s when you go to think about the, the module or the tilt, uh, the module tilt or, or tracking systems, it starts to branch out a lot. And I think here they, they, they kept it together, but really you should have uh, branches coming out of, uh, of there again and even with uh, PV greenhouses, uh, you can have uh, tracking systems there um, as well. And then obviously you go down with the different applica agricultural applications that are possible and uh, you have a myriad uh, of different systems that are possible to be uh, developed. And because there's all of these different systems coming, uh, finding common points that can unite all of these can be difficult. And so for a regulator or for uh, a, a, a person like us who were trying to put forward some best practices, it's uh, quite complex. 
However, I mean, I think what, what also comes with this complexity is the need for a lot of foresight and, and really an additional foresight uh, compared to standard solar uh, projects because you start to th have to th think about these two, uh, these two sites which have sometimes conflicting or very different uh, impacts on, 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 the, on their quality of both sides or, or their sustainability. And this is why we, we uh, said that all agrivoltaic projects should or must start with a uh, sustainable agriculture concept. Now this concept, what it can be, can take many forms, but the way we envisioned it is as a, as a document that really defines the, in, a, in a lot of detail how um, the project is going to effectively operate both as an agricultural project and as a PV generation uh, equipment and lay out how these two, uh, the, how the criteria that are defined within the, the document are going to maximize the potential Agro agrological, ecological synergies uh, and the socio-economic benefits to the specific location where the project is going to be uh, located. With this sustainable agriculture concept, we saw four different dimensions uh, to it, the agriculture, the environment, the socio-economics and the life cycle of the project and we defined three main levels of importance from a must uh, category that should be common to all agrivoltaic projects to a should and a could of optional and increasing levels of um, requirements to improve quality or, or sustainability. And what this allowed us is to, to do a first outline of, of all the different uh, criteria that should um, be included uh, or could be included in, in, in the uh, sustainable agricultural concept and the steps and actions that are uh, that can be implemented to uh, meet uh, the objectives of the, of the project. Now I'll spare you the, the, uh, the details, I invite you to, to, to read the, the guidelines, but basically what this uh, framework allowed us to do is to come forward with the first indicative framework to assess the quality of the of the projects, both in two dimensions in the sustainability side and in the synergies. So in the sustainability, we talked about is the project going to be uh, sustainable from a financial perspective, but also from a social and economic uh, perspective in, in, in the place that it is going to be developed. But also, is it uh, respectful of the environment and of the uh, specific location, again, that it is uh, developed in terms of water usage or uh, fertilizer use. In terms of synergies, we, we also thought that it was uh, very important for developers uh, and regulators to really have forward thinking about are there any potential uh, co-benefits that can be unlocked from, co uh, from uh, developing a project that is both PV and agricultural. And what this comes out of is, is this our system where most of the projects built today should be are in the one stop area. Uh, maybe you have you, you ha definitely have a lot of projects that are in these two stars areas here. Uh, the idea that over time with all the uh, optional criteria becoming uh, more widely adopted in the market we would move towards a three-star uh, qualification for, for the majority of projects built in the European Union. Now, what we were able to do looking at, at, at existing and, and high quality uh, projects that, that the, the members of the works room were putting forward as, as examples and its uh, case studies, so we were able to uh, outline and define 11 key areas uh, are very important to look at when you're doing the EPC of an agrivoltaic project. The first one of which is to start with the definition of the sustainable agriculture concept, um, but then include things such as ensuring the appropriate uh, structure height for the crop uh, being uh, grown or the agricultural activity carried out on site, to uh, optimize the module transparency, to ensure that there's an, uh, an optimal level of, of light and shade 
reaching the crop or, or uh, animals uh, underneath to adapt the electrical system to any potential uh, risks from the uh, existence of uh, an agricultural activity on site. And what was really interesting when we, we, I started to think about this presentation is that I realized that PV case and, and our suite uh, of, of, pro of products really facilitates the uh, design and the task required for the majority of these uh, tasks, uh, of these best uh, practices, with the, the, uh, the three ones that, that, that are not covered yet by, by our suite, very much focused on, uh, on purely the agricultural uh, side of, the, of any agrivoltaic project. So as I said, I mean, I think we're a very young company and, and, and we have been thinking about agrivoltaics for uh, very little time, I think uh, for a couple of months. Uh, but it's very interesting because we see a lot of potential and a growing interest from our uh, existing clients in the possibilities to use PVKs to design agrivoltaic projects. The most important element in our, in our PVKs uh, ground mount, which is uh, basically an AutoCAD uh, plugin that again facilitates all the tasks required to uh, design and do the detailed engineering of, uh, of any PV project from the civil uh, engineering to the uh, electrical including things such as ground grading uh, or, or uh, topographical analysis. And here for when we're thinking about agrivoltaic systems the main thing that, that this is useful for is for open uh, systems, both interspace and, and, and overhead, because you can design any type of system that you, that you want, and particularly uh, with any type of um, module that you, you need, because you're able to, to, to customize the size and, and, and shape, as long as, long as it's a rectangle, uh, of, uh, of the modules used in the, in the projects, which opens up a lot of, already a lot of applications possible to be, to be uh, uh, thought of in this AutoCAD environment. The next uh, product in our suite, which is about to be launched uh, next week, actually, is a PVK roof mount. Here, obviously, the uh, main application is closed uh, systems, mainly PV greenhouses in the case of uh, agrivoltaic projects, but if, if needed also for, for agricultural uh, buildings. Uh, and where the focus still for the moment is, is on, on fixed systems, but where potentially in the future we'll also able to be able to support tracked uh, systems. And, and here, I mean, you, you have applications such as um, horticulture or, or aquaculture that are, that are used in, in uh, closed agrivoltaic uh, systems. And finally, the, the last one, which is going to be the main focus of, of the rest of my, of my presentation, is a PV case yield, which is a simulation uh, of light uh, software, which uses um, algorithms that simulate the behavior of photons as they interact with the environment that, it's, has, that is modeled. And basically what this allows us is to uh, design any project that we like on PVK's ground mount, and then simulate its performance uh, at a very accurate, uh, in a very accurate way uh, th throughout the whole, the whole year. And this is also the case for uh, systems with single axis uh, trackers. Um, now it's not an agricultural uh, yield software yet. Uh, for the moment, we're only thinking about it as a, as a PV uh, um, simulation software, but it, it already has a lot of uh, uses that are that can that are that can be useful for the uh, agrivoltaic project uh, developers, mainly because we are able to uh, accurate, accurately model the shading effects of the PV system on the ground. Now we're already thinking a lot about how, how um, agrivoltaics 
requirements could be integrated within the, the software, but um, we're just starting. But now I just want to take you quickly through how uh, agrivoltaic projects can be designed with our, with our suite, which uh, starts in the uh, ground mount uh, software where you are first able to fully customize your, your plant design and, and very, uh, very easily you can um, both customize the module in frames or and, and, and the piling and the piling uh, distance choosing any type of, uh, of angles or uh, single axis tracking uh, systems. And then also in the in, in, in ground mount, uh, it's very simple to uh, select project locations and uh, analyze and import the topography of the project site, draw, draw its uh, boundaries and any uh, restrictions to auto generate the, the uh, project layout uh, in, in any way you, you prefer. And then on PDK's ground mount, you can uh, then uh, add uh, plans and generate the, th the 3D terrain following model of your of your plan and it will, at the end you you end up with something like this then we we start working on on our pvk's yield platform where i think the first step is to upload any pan file we uh we like in this case we we uh benefited from from uh, solitech sending us their their pan files which have made it uh easier for us to, to model, but in, an, uh, in any way you, you are able to, to manually uh, define the characteristics of the, of the model. And, and in the case of agrivoltaic projects, the most important parts are, are the, the uh, cell density uh, and the size of the model, because that's what's going to give you the, the, uh, the shading uh, under the, the model, which is going to affect the crop. Um, but what you, we are able to do is very easily import the design from our CAD-based uh, environment into our 3D simulation uh, environment. And here you can see how, how the, the simulation looks like. Uh, you can uh, analyze it without plants. You can see there how the, the sun uh, tracks across the, the, the sky throughout the, the year. Uh, in the system and how and, and how the PV system uh, generates shade that obviously changes as the days go by and as the seasons go by and you can simulate and it already and we think that this is already quite useful particularly if you're uh, working with with farmers who may may have um, difficulty imagining what a uh, an agrivoltaic project looks like you can already do a preliminary shading analysis and, sh and show to, to the uh, farmer, look, this is how the lighting throughout the year uh, of your crops is going to, 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 to look like. Now, what, we, what we're also able to, to do is, is help uh, developers and, and investors, actually, to find the best um, types of, of designs uh, by help by, by enabling s easy simulations of, of different combinations of, of, of uh, systems and here for the the purpose of this presentation we, we simulated four different plans one without what, systems one without plants and one with plants with two different model specifications uh, the the conventional solitech uh, by fish module and the uh, agro uh, PV uh, Solitech uh, module to to basically s start thinking from an agricult uh, from a P solar PV yield uh, perspective how different types of uh, of modules will be will be affecting the uh, project. Now, obviously, one of the first uh, things that that we saw, and this is going to be extremely straightforward, is that as we increase the module transparency. Uh, there was less uh, cap capacity installed on the on the same uh, layout and less uh, production. But I think this, as I said, was was expected, and uh, in a way is reassuring because it means the the, the simulation is is working. 
one thing that we, we also saw is that the presence of plants uh, reduced the albedo uh, of the, on the system and therefore decreased the generation uh, slightly by, th by three, around 3%, uh, but still a noticeable uh, effect. And one more thing that, that we found that was quite interesting is, is uh, how the higher transparency of the modules increased the specific yield even in the presence of, uh, of, uh, of plants. So um, really, I mean, I think what we wanted to, to show you quickly with these slides is how much detail you can already see with uh, our suite of products on that will inform your decisions for to develop an agrivoltaic uh, project. So some closing comments. I think you know it's it may be that the European Union is is on the boom of an agri of an agrivoltaic uh, moment, uh, but it's it's not very clear yet. I think what we need to ensure as a sector is that we do it right when we are doing agrivoltaic. Projects and and that we ins instill this foresight into project development to ensure that they are both of high quality and sustainable. And one more thing is that uh, we, as a company, are really happy to 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 accompany this uh, this effort uh, by giving um, project developers and NEPCs the, the tools they they need uh, to to develop these uh, projects. Now, what we are working on at the at the moment is on on validating the the PV performance predictions with operating uh, agri PV installations. And if anyone has any uh, operating agri PV installations, uh, we'd love to 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 get in touch. Um, and then we're maybe more on the on the R and D side is um, already working on on seeing how we can implement. Uh, light availability calculations under the the system, so that we can also uh, tell the the user of PVK yield. Okay, this is the am exact amount of sunlight or shade which uh, is at this specific place in the uh, in the model. Um, we want to also facilitate the addition of different plant types or different types of uh, of crops under the the models as different plant types will have different albedos, and they will have different albedos at different times of the year. Uh, so it's also an important consideration when you are trying to think only on the, on the PV side. And then I think this is uh, maybe more ambitious and, and more longer term. We're also looking into ways where we could implement also an agricultural yield calculation tool to a PV case, to the, to the solar PV yield, so that we would have you know, a fully integrated agrivoltaic uh, yield uh, tool that's able uh, to, to help developers find uh, the, the, best, um, the best design and also more easily convince farmers uh, when they are uh, working with them. I will leave it at that. I don't know if there's any questions or, or, or comments, but thanks a lot for listening. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for asking my question. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, we have two. Hello, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation, very interesting. Um, you mentioned a lot uh, the transparency as a property of PV panels, uh, for, which is important for agri-PV. Uh, do you know, could you recommend any other thing that PV maker could focus on developing its product for the agro-PV uh, segment, let's say? I'm asking because I'm just curious and maybe trying to collect some ideas for our R&D projects on the panel level, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, good question. I'm not aware of, uh, of other important considerations. I think really what's critical for any agrivoltaic projects is the, the uh, amount and quality of, of light that reaches the... Uh, the crops under it. I think, I mean, 
I'm really not an expert in in the field, so I don't want to 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 say too much. But I I could think about you know different types of uh, of glass or glass colorings could uh, could help in that uh, sense, so that you know you have uh, maybe not full transparency, but some sort of translucency, certain colors. If you would be able to capture certain wavelengths or or not, uh, that could damage the plant. I don't know. I I'm not an agronomist, so so uh, I I wouldn't know how to answer. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. It's, it's really amazing what PVKs is doing. So I'm looking forward for some cleaning and watering scenarios in your system. I have actually two questions. So, so you mentioned uh, you were using PAN files from Solitech and then I'm completely uh, sure that uh, they make sense. But from US there are currently more and more news that, uh, that the systems there are underperforming mainly, I would say, because of, let's say, sometimes degrading modules or so-called Peter Pan files that, that uh, are out there. Uh, do you have also experience with such files that they are, let's say, very optimistic, let's say, not only on the power or bifacial T level, but also on, on temperature coefficient? I saw already some. And my second question would be, can you already model vertical scenarios? Because I think it's it's not so easy, and PVC cannot do that very precisely. But we have developed uh, a model for it called uh, Mobidic. So if you are interested in cooperation, then we we could go for that. So Peter Pan and then vertical. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the questions, Radovan. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, we're very much aware of the issue with uh, the Peter Pan files and also the, the problem of, uh, of underperformance of uh, PV projects in, in the US, which also I think is very much related to, to uh, difficulties in simulating bifacial and tracked uh, systems combined in, in PV sys and, and basically the whole industry working a little bit on, on guesstimates. Um, regarding the other pan files, we, we are working very actively with uh, module manufacturers or certification bodies to try and see how we can ensure that our users will get the most truthful uh, version of uh, the module specs when they are using our, our uh, simulation software. Now it's, uh, it's not all, always easy because not all uh, module manufacturers nor certification bodies want to uh, play uh, play ball, but uh, it's something that we are very much aware and, and trying to uh, meet. Regarding your your second question, I th this is something that might have been implemented while I was on holiday. So <laughs> I think yes, we are able to to simulate uh, vertical ants. Definitely, I mean, I think as long as you can model it in PVC ground mount, you can simulate it. Uh, and I think the, that's a, been a little um, challenge with the, the angle of the, of the section, but I think that has been fixed now or is in the process of being fixed. Not, nonetheless, happy to have a conversation and a, a collaboration. We're always looking for that. And I think that's the main reason why we're actually also attending and, and, and exhibiting at the, at the Milan uh, conference. So looking forward to see you there.